Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. We are in chapter 2 talking about the various concepts and questions from this particular chapter and looking forward to understand more about what the questions could be from this particular chapter 2. And at this point of time we have covered few of the questions in our past tutorial from this chapter and let's look forward to some more in this particular tutorial as well. The very next question we have is the question number 20 and here we are talking about the business advisors during iteration 5 planning that they require changes to the system delivered in iteration 3. That means first of all you need to understand a simple one-liner scenario that currently we are heading towards iteration 5 which is sprint 5 and the business is asking for a change to the system which has been delivered already to sprint ago that is sprint 3. Of the following activities which would need to be done first to minimize the introduction of regression risk when this feature is changed, right? Because of course we cannot say no to the business on this request because Agile is all about welcoming changes but at the same time we are supposed to take sure, make sure that these changes do not impact us a lot. So what is that activity which you would do among these four options as an activity to prevent the minimum regression risk? Right. So option A says review and update all manual and automated tests impacted by the change to meet the new acceptance criteria. Of course, the revision is being made here, so there might be some side effects of that. And here we say that as this feature certainly uh, is already delivered, a review of all the tests which is already we have with us is required because uh, there might be change in the test cases, there might be change in additional test to be written and adding value to the regressions and uh, this should result in updating the test cases to meet new acceptance criteria as well because you might have written four or five test cases which were, which would have fulfilled the requirement initially but now due to the change you might require to add more test cases to add value to have the complete coverage because when there is a change in requirement there's a change in the acceptance criteria also to ensure that false negatives which are in invalid falling tests do not occur because that would you know trigger additional effort at any point of time so this is the initial task to be performed before a decision about any other changes which can be made that means the analysis part is what we need to do before we can talk about the change. So it looks uh, pretty much okay to be accepted as one of the right answers, but let's be sure with B, C, D. B says write new manual and automated tests for the feature and add them to the regression test suite. Interesting, right? But here, if you notice, this would not be the initial task, right? First is analysis and after analysis, if you need additional test cases to be written, then you will write it, right? So this is not the initial task to perform as the tester would not know what new test cases would be required for these changes without reviewing the current set of test cases. And there may not be need of adding new test cases sometime because probably your test cases are covering the new feature what they are expecting. So they're not adding completely a new feature. They're changing an existing feature, right? And it might be possible that your test cases are already covering that. So in that context, first step is always analysis, not creating things, right? C, automate all test cases from the previous iteration and add them to the automation te regression test suite. Now, again, while this is a very good practice when following Agile, right, it does not, again, address the specific regression risk identified in the scenario. It's talking so just a generic thing that you must automate all the test cases from the previous iterations and add it to a regression test suite, which is, I think, without a change also you have to do it when it comes to agile specifically and it's a common statement not specific to the scenario what we are talking about see this is what the level of judgment you need during the examination that you should ask yourself a question that is this something relevant to what they are asking right it is absolutely correct to automate things and put it into the regression test suite to reduce the regression risk but as per the scenario this does not add any value right Generically, yes, it helps you mitigate or reduce the regression risk, but not according to the statement mentioned. And moving on to the option D says increase the amount of test automation around the system to include more detailed test conditions. Two contradicting things. Same with <laughs> just like option B. Without reviewing things, you just can't go and create things, right? And uh, first you have to analyze and then go for creation. 
and then execution. So creation is not the first step because they also clearly mentioned that what is that something to be done first to minimize the introduction of regression risk, right? So in that context, putting it up all together, the right answer here is A, review and update all manual and automated tests impacted by this change to meet the new acceptance criteria is the right answer. Well, moving on to the next question, which is talking about 21, which two of the following are reasons why automation is essential within agile projects. Now, the very first thing what I want to tell you before we look at the question as well, that is in this case, the which two does not mean you have to select two options. They have given you five statements and out of five, which two are correct in the given four options. So you don't have to select two answers, right? Because the options are only four. So the five statements out of the given five statements, which are the two which are correct because your options are telling you something like one and four, one and five, three and four, two and five, right? So that is the two what they're referring to. Many people get confused and do select different answers. But again, in the examination, there will be a you know, clue for you that when you have to select one, then it will be radio button. When you have to select multiple, it will be checkbox. So you will anyways be you know, influenced by that as a hint. But in case not, my job here is to give you a picture clear on that. Anyways, the five statements what we have is, number one, uh, so that the team maintains or increase their velocity. Now, what exactly was the question? <laughs> Which two of the following are reasons uh, why automation is essential? Okay, what's the significance of automation in agile projects? Number one, so that team maintains or increase their velocity. Um, totally looks good, uh, but this is true because uh, this is one among the thing which we have, right? One, as uh, of course, to talk about the velocity of the team, we need more, less time to do more work. So being high in productivity, the automation helps you to boost that, right? So the more you do manual, the, you know, the slow the work will be, and uh, you will be only able to deliver limited items and less items in each sprint. So given that you have automation in place, agile projects help you to do faster compared to the non-agile projects. So yes, this is certainly true in agile aspects, and it basically manages and uh, manages all the changes and each iteration will require more and more aggression testing. So doing it manual would be very, very tedious. Let's look at the uh, next statement. What we have is uh, to prevent the test team from becoming bored with manual repetitive task. I think as we read it, as we are feeling it a little funny, of course, it's not about the boredom. Professionalism is all about doing the work, but doing it efficiently is our target. And it's not about what makes you bored. Even if you're doing automation for a long time, that can also make you feel bored, right? So it does not go in that context at all. This is not a reason to introduce automation to the project that people are feeling bored of manual. Let's do automation. No, that's not a reason. Three, to retest all test cases from previous iterations. Um, we cannot retest everything. Right, because even when we talk about regressions to be done at the end of each iteration, we have shortlisted certain specific tests which will be executed every time. So say for example, probably you would have executed around 100 test cases in past, then you just shortlist 20, 30, 40, 50 test cases to be a part of your regression testing. So it's not about just blindly executing all the test cases what we have executed in the previous iterations again and again, right? And that's not because of that. Automation is not introduced for this reason, right? So we cannot retest all the test cases from previous iterations. There are many test cases produced with most being through the manual exploratory as well. And it would be feasible to automate everything, right? It will not, it will not be feasible, right? So three goes not as per the expectation. Number four, to eliminate regression in the product due to high code churn. Now that's a very contradicting statement team. If you pay attention to this line very well, it clearly says that you are saying that when, what is code churn? First of all, code churn is like making changes to the code. Number of lines changed due to a change in the requirement, right? Whenever you modify a code, you call it as code churn. So number of lines modified. You know, so in that context, they're saying the code churn will not introduce regression risk. 
how is it even possible? Like it's it's a hypothetical statement. It does not really make sense that a change will not initiate a regression. It will or it may, but I cannot be damn sure that a change or a code churn will not introduce a regression risk. So automation and on top of it, an automation, introducing automation in your process or project does not help you to reduce that. It rather helps you to fasten your process to identify them as early as possible, right? So automation and, you know, code churn, reducing the regression risk is totally not related to each other. So in that context, automation will certainly be, you know, it will help avoid regressions in the product due to the high number of uh, changes, but it will not guarantee that defects have not been introduced, right? You can, because you're doing frequent execution, so you will be, you know, identifying them early is what we mean here, but we cannot be assured that there are no defects introduced. Anyways, now we have only one option remaining, that is five to ensure that code changes do not break the software will. Yeah, that could be seen as one of the strong reasons that automation tools are generally linked to the continuous integration tools that will execute and will highlight instantaneously if the new code breaks the build or not, which is a part of the DevOps pipeline and in a build verification test. So in that context, we put together and say the right answer here is B, one and five are the right statements where one says so that the teams maintain or increase their velocity and five to ensure the code changes do not break the software world with help of an automated test suite well moving on to the next question for the day and the last question of course but a bit lengthy so let's pay attention to it again in this agile project in an agile project, there is more need for testers to understand and develop test automation scripts than in traditional projects. Of the following, which are the two reasons why this is a necessary skill on agile project, which is to understand and develop test automation scripts. Okay, so the agile project, all the testers need to know automation testing. What are the two reasons for that? So statement number one, requirements change daily and have to be regression tested. This rapid change requires automated tests because manual testing is too slow. Okay, looks good, but there is a flaw in that as well, right? And I think you would have figured out the flaw as of already by now. Agile projects do embrace and expect changes. However, this does not really mean that it happens daily, right? So that word daily is something which is not up to the mark. Do We do have changes, we welcome changes, we entertain changes, we implement changes, but not every single day. It's not a hardcore statement that every single day you will expect a change. So in that context, this goes wrong off the topic. Number two, the test should generate feedback on product quality as early as possible. So all acceptance tests should be executed in each iteration, ideally as modifications are made in practice that can only be realized by automated test. Totally in line with the understanding of why a tester should know automation because that helps them to identify the level of quality that means the deviations from the expectation as early as possible right because doing it manually would be a little late because it consumes time but automation could frankly and quickly tell you that hey this test failed now go ahead and explore it why it failed so this is one of the true statement the earlier the agile team gets the feedback as on quality is the better talking about the next one that is three the Test first and continuous integration practice requires that the regression test suite is executed whenever change code is checked in. In practice, that can only be realized by automated test again. So we do remember this discussion that a bundled, bundled set of you know items put together is what we call it as our build verification suite. And it includes static analysis, unit testing, a lot many other things, right? So we just make sure that a build when checked in does not break that. And we have to get into the loop of, you know, infinite loop of rebuild, recheck and reinstall. So yes, that statement totally makes sense. Test first and continuous integration does require test to be automated and to provide feedback on the build as a part of the automated build process. So I think we almost got our answers, but uh, just to be uh, double sure, number four says iteration or sprints are of fixed length. 
uh, the team has to guarantee that all tests can be completely executed at the last day of each iteration or sprint in practice that can only be realized by automated test. Um, uh, there's a small contradiction here. The testing should be done throughout each iteration, not only at the end. So it's not, again, hard-coded that the though the sprints are given that they're of fixed length, the team has to guarantee that all tests can be completed on the last day of each iteration. No, last day is not something as per the protocols reserved for execution, right? You can do executions at any point of time in, tires, in the entire sprint. Coming to the statement, statement number five, the agile projects rely on unit testing rather than on system testing. Since unit testing cannot be executed manually, all tests have to be automated. Now again, I think you don't need me to tell you, given that you are already have you know learned so much about testing. And agile projects do require different levels of testing, and each level has a unique objective specific to that level. And we cannot say that such as you know uh, unit testing is not something you know cannot be done manually, or it's not having a possibility to do that. We are using automation to enhance and you know do it better and as early as possible. Right to save our time and a lot many other factors which are, you know, the relevant answers. So, a statement number five also goes wrong in that context that unit testing cannot be done manually. It can be, right? So put together, the conclusion here and the right answer is D, two and three are absolutely right here. The test should be generate should generate feedback on product quality as early as possible. So all the acceptance tests should be executed in each iteration, ideally as the modifications are made. In practice, that can only be realized by automated test. And statement number three, the test first and continuous integration practice requires that the regression test suite is executed whenever change code is checked in. In practice, that can only be realized by automated test again. Well, that was all we had for you. Again, we just want to make sure that we only give you limited questions in a tutorial because that sometimes becomes very, very lengthy and we don't want to make lengthy tutorials. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below and I'll be always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.